Okay, so again, today um, we'll be talking about the job interview and just a heads up the next um, or the last part of the six part series is facing unemployment at 50 and older and that will be on October 6th. If you're unable to make that one, there is a previously recorded one on the site that you can watch. Okay, so today's webinar is gonna probably be about roughly 50 to 60 minutes, depending on the questions that all of you might ask. Um, after completing this section, um, participants should have a better idea of how to prepare for an interview, um, know the various types of common interviews conducted, um, how to communicate your best image in an interview, uh, how to answer key interview questions, and how to handle some difficult questions. Um, we'll be talking about the STAR method that will be helpful to you and how to formulate your responses to behavioral interview type questions. And then, of course, um, we'll talk about the post-interview steps like thank you letters and uh, interview follow-up. Okay, um, so let's start with talking about interview preparation, which is extremely important. So we'll look at the steps in preparing. Um, you wanna definitely be doing your homework, make sure you're carefully examining the job description again um, and comparing you know, what the skills are they're looking for with the skill set that you have. Um, study their company website, brochures, you can refer to LinkedIn. Um, of course, if you have networking contacts, that's huge. Um, if you have a connection that can be really helpful to you if you know somebody that's working within the company. Um, and then also uh, Google and search LinkedIn for hiring manager information and look for common connections there. The more information you can get prior to the interview, the better. So when scheduling the interview, it is okay to ask questions about the interview process, um, who the interview will be with and how long the interview will last. Um, overall, finding out more about the employer and who'll be, who you'll be meeting with um, with will give you a better understanding of personalities and asking more relevant questions and basically sounding as informed as possible during the interview. Um, verify the address, the location of the interview, as well as the contact number in case there's an emergency that prevents you from getting to the interview on time. And then also it's okay to ask um, for an alternative time or an alternate time rather. Um, there's usually some flexibility with the employer or the recruiter. So keep in mind that they're already interested in you from the information on your resume. So that is okay. Sometimes people are often concerned about trying to reschedule it and it might affect their opportunity for the position, but that's not the case. They're usually, they usually have a few options to select from. Um, be prepared to explain the gaps. Um, and there's a couple different types of gaps I wanna talk about here. Um, you wanna be able to convince the, empl the employer that you can overcome a gap that they may see on the resume. So for example, if they have a posting and you meet all the qualifications, but maybe they prefer somebody working in a certain industry um, and you worked in a different industry, then be prepared to talk about the uh, broader experience or the fresh perspective that you can bring to that position. Um, be prepared, prepared to talk about transferable skills or maybe it's something you can learn quickly or you've been working on it. For example, you've been in a training or you're currently updating a certification that might be um, needed for that type of position. You know, then of course there's employment breaks and um, or gaps in employment, breaks in employment. So um, everybody's situation is unique there. So I really recommend if you have a gap in employment that's quite large that you contact somebody at your local career force and schedule a time to talk to them and maybe walk, you know, talk through it and just be more prepared in how to handle that question in the interview. Um, some gaps so really aren't a big deal. Um, don't sweat it too much because employers really are understanding and things happen. I mean, we've had a recession in the last 10 years. We've had um, COVID, the COVID situation going on for months and people being laid off. You know, things happen and we've had feedback from employers in the past and they've talked about how they just wanna hear people's stories. So as long as you're able to explain it and do it professionally, um, you should be fine there. And of course, your attitude is really important in an interview. Employers are looking for people with a positive attitude. So be aware of your posturing, your voice tones, um, try to be relaxed as, you, as much as you can, and, and of course, remain professional. Um, often employers will emphasize attitude over skills, training, and experience. So attitude is really important. People can be trained in a lot of things. Um, so if a person appears you know, open to change and have a good attitude and exhibits good soft skills, 
an employer may very well choose them over another candidate who may have more skills. So look for ways to show your enthusiasm and your willingness to learn when you're in an interview. And then of course, you wanna look good for the interview. Um, regardless of the job, you wanna look as professional as possible. So research the company, what's their culture like, check out their company website, their LinkedIn profile, um, talk to people that you might know that, that already work there. Um, a good rule of thumb, if you're not sure, is to always dress one step above the company's dress code. So for example, if the company's dress code is casual, then I would dress business casual. Um, if it's business casual, then dress more professional. Um, for example, a suit or jacket and dress pants um, for men and for women, a suit or a blouse and a skirt or dress pants. So use good judgment. Make sure that you're not wearing anything too flashy or distracting. So think about things like your jewelry, ties, you know, that are too loud color-wise. Um, uh, you know, getting back to jewelry, make sure that when you're turning your head, uh, that your your earrings don't you know make a noise. Um, obvious face piercings, tattoos, or you know colors or other types of distractions. Um, you want them to be focusing on what you're saying, not the noise your jewelry is making. Um, make sure, of course, your phone is on silent and you're not chewing gum. Um, an employer may assume that if you don't care about your personal appearance, then you might not care about the job. So, so. Um, how you present yourself is really so important from the time that you walk in the door until the time you sit down and have your interview. Okay, um, I'm gonna pause here for just a moment. Irene, are there any questions yet? Um, I have uh, two questions. Um, first is, let's say you got a question like, um, name three words people use to describe you. How could I come up with that? Um, I wouldn't go unprepared and, and just talk hypothetically in the interview. Prior to the interview, I would talk to people that you know well, or if you are still working, talk to coworkers and get some feedback from them. Thank you. <clears throat> and then one Second. other note is, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize for interrupting. Um, Irene, I just wanted to add that, um, you know, depending on the information that they give you, obviously you want to present positive information in the interview about you, but if you can try and keep it related to the skill set that the employer is looking for. Thank you. I have a second question. Uh, I have anxiety just thinking about going to the interview. What can I do to get rid of this anxiousness? Um, I think there's very few of us in this world that don't get a little uh, nervous in going into an interview. Uh, but I, I would say the biggest thing that you can do is just practice and do some mock interviewing prior to the interview um, with somebody that you know, um, calling us at the Career Force and we can sit down or not, well not sit down because of COVID, but you know, talk over the phone and go through some mock interviewing, or maybe we can do a Zoom call with you. Um, that might even be better so we can see you and see how you're gesturing in the interview and you know give you feedback based on the whole the whole picture thank you Teresa. yeah okay if there's no other questions um we're going to move on oops sorry about that you guys all right so now let's talk about common types of interviews i'm just going to talk about a few here that are more common but um the purpose of the interview, of course, is twofold. It shows the employer um, what you can do for them because they're evaluating your qualifications for the job and they wanna make sure that you're gonna fit in. Um, but you should also be evaluating them and you can do this based, of course, on the information that they provide you throughout the interview. And then, of course, your questions at the end and we'll talk about that towards the end of this presentation and give you some tips there. Um, but the first thing I wanna mention is behavioral interviewing. And this could be in person or by video. Um, in any interview, the employer is evaluating your skills and abil abilities to fit in with the organization. So you could have multiple interviews and you may meet with multiple people at a time. Uh, behavioral interview questions will require you to share a story by describing how you handled past work situations. Um, for example, it'll typically sound something like, um, tell me about a time when. Um, and this type of interviewing prov provides more information and insight about a candidate on the job behavior, their personality, their skills and abilities. So we'll be um, talking today about the technique or a technique 
um, that will help you with answering um, these types of questions. Um, the next one I want to talk about is a telephone screening interview, which is quite common. Um, usually this is done by an HR professional who will be verifying your qualifications. A uh, screening interview is used to basically eliminate candidates. They, they don't plan on moving forward into the, to the next step in the process. Um, on average, they're about 15 to 30 minutes long. Um, you definitely want to be organized and prepare them, or excuse me, prepare for them to happen unexpectedly too. They're not always scheduled. Um, have a cheat sheet of what the employer um, wants, you know, in a candidate and the key qualifications that you have. Um, so one suggestion is, of course, go back and review the posting again. And what I have done in the past is created a little, you know, Excel kind of spreadsheet where I have the required skills on the left side and then on the right side, you know, what I have. So when I'm talking about it, you know, if you're nervous or you're caught off guard, you have it readily available and you're um, less apt to forget something that's really important. So let's say you're a human resources professional and they want to talk about, um, you know, working knowledge of federal and state employment laws. So I would probably talk about my experience with data privacy, FMLA, wages and benefits, um, things of that nature, maybe the hiring and termination process, um, or they want to talk about um, time management or organizational skills. So then you'll talk about your strong organi organizational skills, maybe related to managing multiple projects or how you prioritized your workload or deadlines met. So just have some of those things readily available. I do want to mention too, and this is important for the resume and the interview, um, if you have preferred qualifications, because a lot of times jobs will have that in the bottom of the posting, definitely make sure that you're not only highlighting it in the top third of your resume, because that may help you to stand out from the competition, but I would also have that noted so you can talk about it. And a lot of times with HR, they want the uh, additional certifications, maybe the PHR or SPHR, so then you can talk about that or maybe CPR and, and first aid, which can be, I think, helpful in any any job really, but sometimes they do training in that. Um, if you're bilingual, um, I can't tell you how many people uh, don't put that on their resume or multilingual. So those are really important things to add because it gives you that extra um, thing over and above the competition and, and marketing yourself. Um, now, um, if you're driving and you get a, a call for a phone screening, don't try and take it when you're driving. Either pull over or reschedule it when you're in a better place. Um, there's just too many distractions. There's cha a chance, you know, too large of a chance to have a dropped call. Um, so the purpose, of course, is to select the best candidates to move forward in the process and meet with the decision makers. Now, an in-person screening. Um, you know, may happen. I think with social distancing, a phone screen is going to be more likely. But of course, in this instance, you're going to be meeting with somebody. So you want to dress professionally as you would for any other interview in the process. Um, the purpose of this interview is basically the same as the phone screen. Like I mentioned, they're looking at why you're interested in um, how you meet the required skills for the position. Um, and then there's also a work sample interview. Um, a work sample is basically a sample of your work showing your knowledge or craft. Um, they're using this to measure the extent of your skills and competency for a role. Um, for example, somebody like an artist would bring a portfolio of their work. If you're in academia, you could bring examples of your research publications. Writer, editor might bring writing samples. That said, there are other jobs, a lot of other jobs, where you could bring samples in addition to references that might you might have, um, or letters of recommendation, rather. Um, maybe a teacher, for example, would bring a lesson plan or some lesson plan examples. So think about additional things you can do to show the type of work that you, you have done in the past. Now there's also the group and peer group interviews. Um, the candidate group interview, these interviews have two or more applicants applying for the same position and competing against each other um, as they're all interviewed at the same time. So these types of interviews test things like your professionalism, leadership skills, and basically how you interact within the group. Um, a peer group interview is uh, an opportunity for some of your potential coworkers to meet with you. And the goal of that, of course, is to evaluate you and again, determine if you're gonna fit in. And then, of course, there's the video or virtual interviewing. 
So there's two types. There's uh, some of you may have experienced the computer generated questions, the timed responses, and of course those um, conducted by hiring managers via some interview platform like Zoom or Microsoft Teams. So make sure that you're comfortable with the technology, definitely practice. Um, if it's a video interview, make sure that your background is professional um, or at least neutral and that you can be heard well if you can test the audio and video in advance. Advance. Um, be careful not to have you know, children or animals nearby that can cause distractions and then dress like you would for an in-person interview and make sure that you do have the phone number of the interviewer handy in case something does go wrong. And we, we all know that, that that can happen. And some people use virtual backgrounds. So of course use something that looks professional if you have that opportunity. But if you'd like to get more information, some more valuable information on just video interviewing, um, we have a pre previously recorded webinar on the careerforcemn.com website that you can um, check out. That has a lot of great information from um, one of our speakers, Catherine byers Greet. okay? All right, now let's move on and talk about the image you wanna communicate. Um, so of course you wanna be organized. You wanna get everything organized early and have extra copies of your resume. Um, when you were scheduling the interview, you, you could have asked, you know, how many people will be interviewing me. But even if they said, you know, let's say it's a six panel interview, I would still bring additional copies just in case somebody else decides to sit in. Um, your list of questions, because you'll want to be asking questions at the end of the interview. And then, of course, a portfolio if you need to show some examples of your work. Um, plan to arrive about 10 to 15 minutes before the interview. And you wanna be really respectful of the interviewer's time. They may have appointments before you or other interviews or calls to make. I wouldn't show up too much earlier than the 15 minutes. If you, if you are there a half an hour, 45 minutes early, I would just wait in the car until you get closer to that scheduled time. And you wanna send good signals. More than 80% of communication is nonverbal. So be aware of your facial expressions, your body language. Um, remember anyone you run into on the way into your interview, maybe asking, maybe asked for feedback about you or what they thought of you later. So be aware of that. Um, you know, greet the interviewer. As far as greeting them, um, a year ago, you know, we would recommend a firm handshake. But now with social distancing, obviously things are changed. Um, these are questions, you know, in addition to the mask, which I think we're all wearing anyway, but these are questions you can ask in advance. You know, are you handshaking or, you know, are you practicing social distancing? But if you didn't and you show up at the interview, I would recommend just um, not reaching out to hand, shake their hand unless they offer. And if you're not comfortable with it, then just politely tell them I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm practicing social distancing. You know, I'm sorry, but I'm practicing or however you want to word it, but just make it professional sounding and not offensive. Um, and then as far as the mask goes, um, I would wear it in and plan to wear it unless they allow you the opportunity to take it off. So let them kind of lead there. And then focus on the questions and answer them carefully. Sometimes you'll get a long two-part question. Um, and it's when you're nervous, it's hard to remember what was that second half after you've answered the first half. So it's perfectly okay to ask them if they could please re repeat the question after you answer the first part. And then of course, um, for lack of better words, um, avoid being creepy or weird. Um, you know, different making odd facial expressions and things because they may read into what it is that you're doing. Now, Irene has a great example that she can share with you um, that she um, worked through with somebody that came into the career force. Yes, we had a gentleman who had been interviewing for positions in engineering. He got lots of jobs. Off. But the thing is, he went to a lot of job, job interviews, but with all those interviews, he still wasn't getting any offers. So we're trying to figure out what was going on. Why wasn't he getting any offers, but he's getting tons of interviews. So he went to Career Force, and our staff worked with him, and he did a practice interview. <clears throat> we found out what the problem was pretty quickly. Sometimes when he was thinking about answering to a question, he would pause and he would make the weirdest squished in face facial expression. Uh, just looked really weird. And right away, we could see what the problem was. So we worked with him so that he would unpractice. He would practice not 
um, making that facial expression. And as he got better, interviews got better, and he finally got an offer. Thanks. Thanks, Irene. Okay. So, um, so if you're, you know, I always tell people when they come in, if, if they're getting the interviews, then that means that, that most likely indicates that their resume is targeted pretty well because it's getting noticed, uh, not only in an applicant tracking system, but obviously it's getting into the hands of an HR person or hiring manager. Um, but if it stops there, then definitely I would work on um, the resume. But if you get to the interviews and you're not getting past that or you're not getting past the phone screens, then the next logical thing to do is is mock interviewing. Um, so now uh, let's talk about show and tell. You wanna be prepared, of course, to back up statements with samples of your productivity or be able to quantify things like you would on your resume, um, use, using stories to illustrate your experiences, um, and then emphasize your commitment to learning. You don't wanna come off as someone that's set in their ways. Um, I actually did talk to somebody once uh, who was complaining that he was passed up by um, for a job that somebody else got offered and they were a lot younger and he was he felt that it was because of age um, but then he proceeded to tell me that it was his third interview employers don't bring you into second and third interviews unless they're really interested in you and then the more we talked um, the more he the more he divulged and at some point he made a comment that he told them in the interview that he wasn't a yes man and I'm fairly confident that that is what sabotaged the interview it had nothing to do with age so so really be prepared for it and really focus on your skills and experience that you have that the employer wants. And then, um, you know, collaboration is really important. Somebody that's not willing to collaborate within a team, that could end the interview, depending on how you present your responses. And then finish strong. Wrap up by summarizing any strengths and qualities you want them to remember. Um, never leave an interview without, again, asking good questions. We'll give you, as I mentioned before, we'll give you some examples later in the presentation. Um, be proactive on your follow-up. The questions you ask at the end can really help with this. And you can show interest, of course, by asking what the next steps in the process are, but that's not all you wanna ask. And then the follow-up, um, we'll talk about, you know, sending thank you letters to people you interviewed within typically 24 hours. And then each one should get their own handwritten note or email message. I wouldn't carbon copy all the interviews a single email. It doesn't really show that you're putting much thought into it and doing it more as a formality. And then with COVID and less people in the office, um, I think an email message may re reach them timelier and show them you're still interested. Some people do both. They'll send an email within a day of the interview and then they'll send out uh, an email uh, note, you know, a thank you note. And that just, you know, it, that'll trickle in a little bit later, obviously. And that just kind of keeps you on the forefront, you know, of their mind. So, um, okay. So let's pause for a minute. If we have any questions, we'll answer them. If not, we'll move on. Yeah, I do have um, questions. Two questions. Okay. Um, Sarah is asking, do you have any advice on how to overcome the question of you are overqualified for this position? Um, I am struggling to get past the interview and I'm hearing the overqualified reason a whole lot. Okay. Um, well, I mean, the first thing I, I would suggest is probably meeting with somebody, you know, if you want to call somebody at the career force. And the first thing I would look at was your, is your resume. Um, I, I don't know what, at what point you're hearing the overqualified. It, I'm assuming you're getting to the interview part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess it depends on where you, where you're getting that in the process, but um, first look at the resume. And if these are jobs that you truly want, maybe you're in a different place and you're not looking to, you know, for example, climb the corporate ladder anymore, or um, you're transitioning in the next few years into retirement. And, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons people are willing to take a step back, if you will. So um, you just need to be able to, um, I think, readdress the resume, um, make it a little bit clear probably in the summary on your resume. And then also I would probably include a cover letter and then be prepared to explain it in the interview. You know, talk about some of those things because employers are looking at retention and they don't want to bring somebody in and go through all of that cost of sourcing, selection, you know, the loss of productivity on their part by, you know, the training or the background checks and, and everything that goes with hiring somebody. Um, so although we know the workforce today is more mobile, 
and people aren't staying in jobs until you know 30, 40 years and then retiring anymore, um, they still don't want to hire somebody in and then have them leave um, as soon as something better comes along. So you just need to be prepared in your responses and how to, you know, um, just ensure them that this is what you really want. Maybe it's a different type of opportunity that you didn't have before. So getting some coaching on that and, and doing some mock interviewing, I think will be really helpful there. And networking, you know, uh, sometimes it, knowing somebody that has a connection, uh, they can vouch for you. That's another another huge way of going about it. You should be doing it all though, you know, mixing up your all of your approaches. Second question. Mm -hmm. I want to know about the culture of the company and particularly work life balance since I've got a super busy schedule. What questions can I ask that will help uncover that information? Well, the first thing I wouldn't do is go in and tell them you have a super busy schedule and you want to work life balance. So don't word it that way. Um, I would say that you can get a lot of information from them, of course, throughout things they might say in the interview, but at the end, when you're asking questions, you could formulate a question in a way where you can get more information. Um, maybe you could say something like, uh, can you describe to me somebody that's been very successful in this position? And then they'll talk about what this person does. And if that's like, oh, that's overwhelming and I don't want to work 80 hours a week, well, then that's probably not a position that you are going to want to take. So, and you can get a lot of information up front in the job posting. So you really have to know in the posting what they're looking for. And I realize sometimes postings are really vague, um, but just do do your research and have those, those questions that you really want answered formulated around what information you're trying to get at the end of the interview. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, if there's no other questions, we'll move on. Um, so now let's start with them. Um, talking about some tough questions and using the sandwich method in your approach. There's a, a few different methods you can use when you're conducting uh, or when you're having, you're being interviewed rather. Um, of course, some key points, you wanna give direct, honest answers um, and ask questions in return if you need to. Be prepared, anticipate the questions and practice beforehand like we talked about. Um, using the sandwich model, you're basically, if you're giving a response, you wanna start out with something positive and bring up the piece that's not so positive and then ended on a positive note. And you want to remember that throughout the whole interview. Um, so a positive statement followed by the negative situation ending with a positive statement and how basically you've overcome that problem or situation. Um, focus on your best skills and the skills that the employer is looking for. Like I mentioned, don't tell the interviewer negative things about um, yourself or what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. So for example, often we'll get people that will, they'll come in and we'll start talking about the skill set they have and we're working on their resume. And I'll ask them about their computer skills. Um, for example, I might say, you know, how experienced are you from beginner, intermediate to advanced on something like Microsoft Office Suite? And they'll start out by telling me what they're not good at, that they're not really good at PowerPoint. So, um, that's good that they know this and they probably don't want to put on it that they're um, proficient in PowerPoint on their resume. So there's other ways we can word their computer experience. Um, but you have to keep that in mind when you're talking in the interview too. Um, so the other thing you have to remember is you got the interview for a reason. So they're already interested in something on your resume or a lot of things on your resume. So just focus on what you do have and again, relate it to what they want. And then um, a sample difficult question. Um, tell me about a weakness. I wanna explain that question because it's gonna be asked in pretty much every interview. Um, remember, everyone has a weakness. So be prepared with a couple examples because you could be in the interview and they might say, you know, um, somebody just gave us that example. Can you give us another one? So I would go in with at least a couple examples and talk about an area that you're improving on of course, make sure that it's not a core skill that's required for that job. And then, um, you know, just describe how you're working on it. So uh, a couple examples, maybe if you're a really great communicator and you tend to be a little bit more of an extroverted type person, uh, you could talk about meetings you've been in and uh, maybe at times you felt like you might have monopolized the conversation a little bit. So you've learned to take a step back and make sure that everybody's voice is being heard. Um, 
Delegating is an important thing for a manager. You could talk about how you learn to delegate more, freeing yourself up to work on other important projects. Um, so example weaknesses, you know, again, make sure it's not a core skill for the job, but it could be an experience with specific software or another essential skill. Um, but you could talk about the cross training you've taken where you're working on the skills, or if you're nervous about public speaking, if if that's not something that's, you know, a main skill needed, uh, you could talk about how you join Toastmasters to improve, improve on your speaking skills. Um, so those are just some examples. Um, now, um, I've always been on the design side of things and haven't had as much, well, this is an example, I'm sorry. Um, I've always been on the, the design side of things and haven't had much experience with content development. To better improve my skills in that area, I've taken some content marketing courses, which has helped me to improve my skills by better understanding content market strategy. So just, like I said, sandwich your responses to them and practice. Okay, so another method I wanna talk about today is the STAR method. Um, this is an acronym and the S is for situation, providing an example of a situation that you were involved in that had a positive outcome. It could be an event, a project, a challenge that you faced. Um, and then you'll describe the task that was involved um, in that situation and choose tasks again that show your skills. Um, it could be about responsibilities you had, assignments that you were given. And then of course, what was the action? Uh, describe what action you took to resolve that situation and then give them the result and make sure that all these star stories again are end on a positive note. Um, so tell them what the positive results were that came from your actions. This method um, provides a framework in your mind to help you remember a story as it relates to the interviewer's questions. So the more you can practice these, I think the more comfortable you'll feel in the you'll feel in the interview. And if you want example questions, we have a plethora of questions here that we can email you or we can, like I said, talk to you over the phone, do a little bit of mock interviewing. So there's lots of options there. And then um, I apologize, but getting back to Career Force, those pre-recorded videos, there's, there's a few there on, on um, interviewing. And then YouTube, there, there's a, really a lot of great information on YouTube also. Uh, from career coaches. Some of it's not so great with others, but um, that they offer free information, some of which you can also find on LinkedIn. So let's take the example question, describe a time you worked with a difficult person. So all of us have worked with people that have different management styles, different learning styles, different backgrounds, different beliefs, and disagreements and conflict are gonna happen. They just are in every, in every workplace. Um, and employers know this, of course, but they don't always wanna be having to put out fires. So the, what the employer really wants to know here is how you work with people. How do you handle conflicts in the workplace? You know, How do you treat others? And the steps you take to resolve conflicts. So when you're answering this question, you know, use the STAR method and um, try, you know, remain professional and don't get emotional. Okay, so let's look at some key interview questions. Um, tell me about yourself. This is often the first question. Um, they want you to make it clear that this is the right job for you and you're the right person for the job. Um, think of this question as communicating your brand. What do you have that they want? Um, this is where you really market yourself. So don't just bring up your title and you definitely don't wanna talk about things in your personal life. That's not what they're looking for. Um, you wanna talk about what you've done as it relates to the job you're interviewing for. And one way to remember it is talk about the present, past and future and frame it around the skills the employer is looking for. So currently I'm working with XYZ company or recently I just um, ended my job with XYZ company and I was responsible for you know this, this and this. And then talk about the past, again, relating it to the skills that they want. And then um, the future, what, what it is that you're um, looking, you know, where you're looking to go as far as learning and growing and with your job opportunities or job opportunities with this company or growth opportunities for that matter. 
Um, and then why are you interested in working for this company? The, you know, sometimes they'll word things different ways, but as long as you've practiced and you have a response for one, you should be able to answer it in a different, if they answer, ask it a different way. For example, they could say, why are you looking to leave your current job? Focus here on opportunities to learn and grow your skills. Talk about what you're passionate about. Um, is this job directed more towards um, where you're trying to go in your career? But you definitely want to make sure when you're responding to this that you don't, you know, bash your previous or current employer. You never want to say anything negative. So instead of focusing on negatives, even if it was a toxic work environment, really just in this type of question, focus on the um, what you learned from that opportunity, basically, and the relationships that you did create, the positive relationships. Um, what is your major weakness? We talked about that one previously. Um, again, just be prepared to just have a couple options there. Um, tell me about a time you worked with a difficult person. What employers want to know here is how you handle a conflict and interact with other people. Um, you know, focus on the skills relevant to the job and use an example again with a positive outcome. Um, where do you see yourself in three years? They might say three years, five years, whatever they put out there. Um, you want to avoid saying, I want your job. It sounds corny. That's not what they want to hear. Um, the interview wants the interviewer wants to understand your career goals. They're looking for motivation and getting back to my comment earlier about retention. They want to make sure that they're going to invest if they're going to invest in you that you're going to stick around a while. So think about the skills that you want to grow and where you want to develop um, in this line of work that you're in. And then what kind, what kind of projects do you like to look for? You know, so again, keep it all relevant to the job that you're interviewing for. And then also, I just want to make a note here. If you're an older job seeker and you're looking to retire in the next year or two and you get a question like that, um, there are other things that we talk with them about considering. Um, for example, maybe taking a shorter term type position, working with a staffing agency or a recruiting, recruiting firm. Network with people. You can get some really great ideas from other people to help you in your job search and, um, you know, obviously help you with potentially making a connection with an employer. Um, you know what I want to bring up before I move on um, an example of a star story. And then I, I think Irene has a really great example too, um, but I'll, I'll read mine first. So here's a question that might be asked um, surrounding working or contributing to a team environment. So they might say, tell me about a time you contributed towards a team environment. So I would respond with a situation. I could say when I worked for ABC company, communication within our work group was breaking down and important information wasn't being relayed between our shift and the next shift during the changeover, which was resulting in late shipments or whatever the problem was. Um, the task as managers, we need to improve the situation or we needed to improve the situa situation because we knew it was really affecting productivity and it was affecting service time. The action that we took, um, what I would say then is to resolve the problem, we organized employee meetings where we would bring in pizza between shifts and allow everyone to discuss relevant issues and other important topics and suggestions that employees wanted to bring up. And then the result from this, this situation, um, the lines of communication improved and having these meetings also greatly increased morale of staff and better productivity in the warehouse because of this opportunity to have their voices heard. Um, and they felt more valued. Um, another thing that came out of these meetings was it also made management more aware of additional stra uh, staffing uh, or staff training needs or opportunities. So I talked about the situation. I mentioned the task. What was our action to resolve the issue? And then I ended on a positive note. Okay, um, another question they could ask, tell me about a difficult situation you encountered at work and how did you overcome it? Irene has a great story here. Do you want to talk about it, Irene? Sure. Okay, so we had a situation where a staff member who was in charge of a brand, launching a brand new five week seminar just unexpectedly left. So we had a situation. We'd already advertised the seminar, so it had to go on. So that was our situation, our S. 
So T is the task. So I had to identify what needed to be done. What were the tasks that needed to happen? So I needed to get a resource area. We had no resource room to even hold it. I had to come up with an agenda. I had to recruit speakers. And I had to learn enough about the topic area myself that I could facilitate the whole five week seminar. That was the T for task. A was the action. So what did I do? I had to learn new software. I needed to interview different people from within our de department to find out how I, could put, put, how I could put together the agenda. So I had all these things that needed to be done and I took action and did them. And then R is our result or our positive result. In this case, we had 20 trained candidates who gave very positive feedback and the person also got a performance award out of. So there's your star story. I think that's a great example. I mean, thanks. Okay, so so they're they're obviously going to ask you a lot of questions throughout, um, but now you have an opportunity to ask questions as well at the end. Um, it's always important to ask the interview questions. Um, not only will it make you sound more insightful and help you to stand out, it gives you more information about the position and their expectations. So it's another opportunity for you to, to decide if this is really a good fit for you. Um, there are also employers out there that um, I've heard this from recruiters that they won't consider somebody if they don't have any questions. And keep in mind too, if there's two equally qualified people in that interview and they like them both, and at the end, one of them just asks what the next step is and the other one has five or six questions to ask, Obviously, that one person um, is going to sound a lot more enthusiastic and a lot more interested in the position, and they may very well be the person they choose just based on those questions. Um, you know, some examples, I mentioned this one previously. Could you describe to me what an ideal candidate looks like? Can you tell me how my resume compares to your ideal candidate? Um, also, is there something missing on my resume that you would like to see? Now, a lot of these mean somewhat the same thing. I'm just giving you three examples here that are similar. Um, but these three, these last three questions I just mentioned are a great way to get more information if you're not selected. Um, you won't ask all of them, of course, because they're similar. So choose what's comfortable for you. But I would go in with at least um, be ready to ask, like, be ready to ask up to five questions. I wouldn't probably ask much over five, but be prepared with 10, eight to 10 questions. And the reason is, is um, some of these questions could come up in the interview as you're going through it. And, you know, you wanna be respectful of their time. So you don't wanna have more than five, but you don't wanna repeat questions that have already been answered. So make sure again, that you're framing your answers around how that interview went. Okay, I'm going to pause for um, a couple questions here. Irene, do you have any? Um, why is the job open? Uh, why, what, what do you mean, why is it? What, can they why is the, jo the job opening that you're interviewing for open? Okay, well, I that's kind of ambiguous so i guess I, i'm not really sure how to answer that question like did somebody leave um and there's okay. an opening or did somebody or is it a brand new opening that just they added to their staff right um i think it's a fair question i mean i know people do ask it you know everybody has a different opinion on that um you can ask why the job the job's available and often that's a question people will ask at the end of the interview I think it's a fair question. Okay. Also, um, you this not, doesn't necessarily tell you why the job is available, but another question you could, could reframe in the end is, could you describe to me somebody that wasn't successful in this position? And you know, they very well could describe somebody that they let go and you're replacing them. So I think there's a few ways to find out, but, but yeah, I think, I think it's okay to ask it, just be aware of how you frame it. Okay, a uh, second question. Is it all right for me to have those questions written down in front of me and for me to be like reading the questions? Absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. I would have, like I said, eight to 10 and have them written down. One thing I wouldn't do though, if throughout the interview, because I think it's distracting is take notes. I know some people do it. Um, you know, if you jot down, you know, a thing or two here and there, and it's not distracting, that's one thing. I know I'm kind of deviating a little bit from asking questions, but yes, you can bring in your questions, but no, I wouldn't be taking notes throughout the whole interview. It's distracting and it takes more time away from the interviewer's time. Just one more. Yeah. Is it, is it appropriate to ask about volunteer opportunities through working there? Volunteer opportunities through working there. Any kind of volunteer opportunities that through the company, like Habitat for Humanity, do they have any kind of availability in getting involved once they work at the company? Oh, okay. Oh, absolutely. I think that that that's a great thing to do. A lot of companies are really, you know, big on being involved in the community, and I think that you want to be a part of that reflects positively on you. Thank you. The one thing I want to add to that, though, on volunteering is if it were a different situation where you're involved in a lot of things outside of work, be aware of uh, or be careful with how you present it in an interview because you don't want it to come off like you're you're so um, sidetracked with all of these volunteer opportunities that might affect your job. So that's kind of a double edged sword on that on that note. OK. Um, now let's talk about post interview steps. Um, so, of course, you want to have references available. You may not need to use them with social media out there. I think that more and more employers are finding that they can probably get more information and, and more valid information for lack of better words um, going to your social media accounts. So, of course, make sure that if you're using a LinkedIn account, everything's updated and it, it pretty much ma pretty much matches the information you're giving them on the resume. And also um, make sure that everything on your Facebook account, for example, is, is um, if it's out there in public, that it's professional or it's, you know, there's nothing on there that might um, reflect on you negatively. Um, but, but yes, do have references, identify them in the beginning of the process, of course, get their permission. And then I would follow up with them after the interview, prepare them for the phone call that they might get, recap how the interview went. Um, highlight your skills or experience that you want them to mention. Sometimes I'll even ask people if I'm giving a reference for a friend, you know, for a copy of their resume. So I have all of that information available to help me. Um, and then, of course, send a thank you. I think that's always important. And it, it reflects on you positively when you're done and it just shows that you're really interested in the position. Um, it's another effective strategy to sell yourself again and summarize how you match the position. So write a note or a typed note. If your handwriting isn't so great, you might want to type it and sign it. Or you can, as I mentioned in the beginning, send an email. Um, with the social distancing and people not in the office as much, I'm leaning more towards email initially. Um, sometimes employers take more time finishing interviewing. Um, you can send a thank you note you know, a little bit later um, to help you stand out and remind them about you as a contact. And then, um, you know, maybe bring something up from the interview about a connection that you made or something else that you might have um, left out and forgot to mention that might make you a stronger candidate. Um, send it within 24 hours. Um, one thing I don't recommend personally, and this is my opinion, is walking out to your car and bringing the thank you note back into them and leaving it with the office staff or whoever. Um, I think that it just implies that you're doing it as a formality and it's less time to put thought into individual thank yous. So I don't really advocate it. Uh, make sure that your note, of course, is clear and concise, concise. reinstate your interest or restate your interest. Um, plan your follow-up. Situations may change. So just because you haven't heard anything in a while, um, you know, things happen. Sometimes employers will start the interview process, and this has happened a lot with COVID uh, based on my experience, where a hiring freeze will happen, and then there's just kind of nothing. So you can follow up a little bit later if they gave you some indication as to when they were planning on making a decision. Um, wait until after that point, and then send it, you know, just check in, send an email, let them know you're still interested. 
And then maybe they'll come back and say, you know, we're just on hold right now because of, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, another thing you would probably want to do is even if you're rejected, send a thank you note. Just because you're rejected doesn't mean you were not one of their top candidates. Um, again, you got the interview for a reason. Um, this shows you're professional and they may consider you for future opportunities. If um, still you're still interested in the company, convey your desire, desire to have continued communication with them. Um, this just keeps your name, you know, on their mind for a next, you know, another opening down the road and a, another potential opportunity for you. So now again, I want to remind you if you're getting interviews when your resume, then your resume is working for you. Obviously, if you're not getting interviews, then um, you probably need to go back and have somebody help you with retargeting your resume to really highlight your skills and experience. Um, the first thing you're competing with when you're you're sending your resume out there is an applicant tracking system. So if it's not targeted well, you're not going to get to that next step, whether it's a screening interview or an in-person interview. So I really recommend contacting somebody at the Career Force and getting some help um, with that so you can get to that point. Okay, so that um, concludes the presentation, and I just want to check in and see if there's any final questions from anybody? Yes, um, there are a few, some final questions. First is, how do you answer the question if they ask in the interview about a gap in, a gap in, your, in your career? Right. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, there's so many different scenarios with people. You can sometimes justify those gaps. Maybe you went back to school to complete your degree or you were volunteering and you were getting valid experience that's relevant to the job that you're applying to. So there's a lot of ways to address the gaps. Um, so I would really encourage you to sit down with somebody and talk about the gap and then help come up with a way to formulate filling that gap on your resume and talking about it in the interview so you're prepared. <laughs> Um, second question, mm -hmm. sort of similar to another question you asked, but uh, tell me about a time you were feeling uncomfortable. When they ask that, what are they really, what's the underlying thing that they're looking for? What are they getting at? Tell, I've never had that one. Tell me about a time when you're un, you were uncomfortable. uncomfortable. I, I would just go to uh, a a difficult, I think I would probably lean more towards a, an uncomfortable or difficult situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I think I gave, we gave an answer on that earlier. Mm -hmm. And then just create a star story around it. And they want to know how your hand, you handle difficult situations. Because really, at the end of the day, difficult, uncomfortable, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, nobody likes to run into difficult situations, but we all do at times, right? Right. Okay. Um, question. Multiple people say they have practice, they have trouble with a tell me about yourself question. Do you recommend that they go to a career force? Yes, I do. Um, like I said, kind of frame it around um, the present past work present his, work history. Because they're looking at your, this is basically, think of it as you marketing yourself. It's kind of what your, your elevator speech or what you might have put in your summary if you, if you did a summary correctly. Um, so it's just talking about your present skills, past skills, and then what you're looking for as far as moving forward in the future and growth to develop you more in your career. So just try to keep your responses, by the way, to all of your questions to no more than a minute or two. And that one star story I, I read to you, it might have seemed longer, but it was less than two minutes. So um, just be aware of the time that you're talking. You don't want to elaborate too much because that can be a turnoff in an interview. So when you're telling them about yourself, keep it specific to your skills that they're looking for. You don't talk about FIDO. You don't talk about you know, what you do outside of work, that's not what they want. It's all its all really related to your skill set. And yes, I would call somebody at the Career Force and they can help you to formulate that too. I mean, we can help with all of those, those questions. Just give us a call. That's great. 
<clears throat> um, we're going to have to wrap it up now. What <clears throat> what I want to tell everybody is that I know that we didn't go through up, but we were able to answer all of the questions. Um, however, there are career force locations. Um, I highly recommend that you connect with them and they can help you with these questions. Teresa, other yeah. comments? Um, just a reminder that you can watch all the pre recorded versions of Career Force webinars on the CareerForceMN.com website um, to include our the job clubs on Career Force. And if you want more resources, you know, whether it's job resources, community resources, just um, give us a call. All right. Well, thank you everybody for attending today. Thank you.